with us on the program this Monday morning. Let's look to join our in-house reviewer virtually as we link up to Honorable Desmond Olariwaju Fowobi. Now, hello, good morning to you. Can you hear me? Or we'll also look to get connections from our Honorable Desmond. Just to remind you, our first conversation of the day is stemming from comments made whilst uh, the SA to President Bola Metinibu on Media and Strategy Chief Bayo Nanuga looked to clear the air in a media parlay with journalists following the controversy surrounding the acquisition of what many term as a new presidential jet. Now, Chief Onanuga says that a new jet was not outrightly acquired, but a refurbished jet, and saying that it is not a property of President Bola Metinibu, but a property of Nigeria. Now, whilst that is headline. The comments coming in from the Bornu State Speaker of the House of Assembly, who says, if that is done for the president, the office of the vice president needs such attention, insinuating that the life of the VP might be under some sort of threats. Now, if we have looked to establish a better connection, let's reconnect to Mr. Desmond Olariwaju. Hello, good morning to you. Can you hear me? Good morning, Vito. Well, very well. Thanks for joining us on the program this morning. Uh, let's jump straight into the conversation. What do you make of the comments made by Chief Bayo Nanuga and the Bornu State Speaker as well calling for a new presidential jet for the Vice President Senator Kashim Shetima, who had come under fire in recent times following the acquisition of a, a new, what I call it, a safe haven for him to reside in in his tenure as Vice President? Well, uh, I would like to start this uh, conversation uh, following the trip of uh, the Vice President uh, Kashim Shetima uh, over what happened in the U.S. that uh, led to the cutting of uh, a portion of his trip uh, to attain a national function due to some uh, some objects that it the presidential jet that was conveying the vice president and his crew. You see, one thing that I would want to say vividly, the fact that Nigerians love to take advantage of some things that should do uh, led to some other things. For instance, I do not understand why without proper investigation, the Speaker of Bonu House of Assembly is actually making some uh, comments or using certain words that the life of the Vice President is being threatened. You know, there are certain things that happen. First thing, he should have called for investigation to understand what has happened to the private, to the presidential jet. What was reported is that strange objects it the, the 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 windows of the presidential jet. It could be bags, it could be anything, it could be snow, it could be anything, you know. So what it should have called for is investigation to establish what actually transpired, and not for him to be making such words. A statement that is highly politicized. The vice president is no longer a property of Bono people. The vice president is Nigeria's property that we need to protect with all jealousy. The vice president is our person, is our leader, and is one of the people that is our treasure, is our leader in the country. So the Bono speaker should not politicize what happened over the some days ago as an instrument for his own uh, national attention or to seek a ship publicity now now, now what's, what was what cleared what was cleared clearing the air on that in terms of the investigation into what strange objects might have hit the plane on its stopover at the jfk airport do you think that this were rounds an outright purchase of a new presidential jet for senator kashim shetima the federal government has invested so much money, whether you call it president or vice president, jet or yacht, 
or maintenance of the office of the president and the vice president. The country has invested so much on the presidency. And calling at this material time that the country is actually going through a lot in terms of the country's economy. It is not proper. It is not the best thing to look at at this time. We should look at what has happened to the jets. If there is a maintenance that needs to be done on it, we are talking about presidential jets for this matter. Whether the president or presidential, it's just political thing. Presidential jet, federal government has invested so much on it. So this particular scenario that happened in JFA, uh, airport in the United States, should not be the reason that we should be calling for purchasing of a presidential jet. It, for me, it doesn't make any political or economic sense for this country at this material time that we are going through a lot. Now, let's come back to other issues as it affects Nigerians and some concerning issues as it regards the cost of travel in Nigeria, be it road transport, be it interstate travel, and even shockingly air travel now with reports that the airfares are skyrocketing is now over 200%, the cost it would have cost you at this time last year to travel now going into the festivities. How does the federal government look to intervene in this regard? There are, for me, this issue has been lingering for quite some time. And it's so unfortunate that it seems that the federal government are locked in ideas on how to tackle this issue of inflation. You know, be it uh, food inflation, the economy, the Nigerian economy is suffering the highest inflation in all sectors. So uh, we limiting it or reducing it to just travel or transportation is just by the way. It's an understatement. The country is in a huge suffering of high cost of living, which has also affected transportation. Today, a common man, a civil servant in Nigeria cannot use the private, uh, the air cannot travel by air, simply because of cost of traveling in the country. To travel by air in the country, something that used to be between 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, is now about 400,000, 300,000, 250,000, 150,000, respectively. I'm talking about local flight. This is what Nigeria usually pay for international trips. Right now, it is what we now pay to make local trip. This is really alarming. That is just a tip of the iceberg for you to know what the country is suffering. The country is suffering the highest case of what they call inflation. And it seems that the federal government is not looking that direction simply because there have been two protests to see that the federal government do something about the cost of living. But this protest has not yielded any positive results. And besides, the protest did not even channel the right, the protest did not even go the right way. You see, the only solution is you have to look at what is the cost of inflation in Nigeria. The major cost of inflation in Nigeria are two things. Owing to the policies of the president, President Bola Ahmed Tunumu, on Unification of our forests and fuel subsidy. Fuel subsidy and naira subsidy removal. You see, this policy, no matter how it looks like, maybe it's the best thing for the country. These two policies are not supposed to come at the same time. The economy of this country, I'm afraid, Throughout the tenor of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I'm not certain if we can recover. I'm not sure if we can recover from this current economy war. The truth be told, for me, despite all the efforts of the president, this effort of the president is not targeting and consolidating on the policies to ensure that 
it will restore the glory of the country. So, so you're saying that the renewed hope mandate is not actually renewing the hope of Nigerians? The policy of the president, there is a, there, there was, there is a force. The, the landing of this policy does not, does not sink well with the people. And the policy has not yielded the desired result, even expected by the president. I'm very sure. It is not only the Nigerians, you people that are shocked. I'm also very sure the cabinet and the president is also shocked because all efforts that have been put in place to cushion the effect of these policies has not needed any positive results. The reason being that the policy is not well thought out and not well announced and implemented. And some of the policies of the president in the last one year to cushion the effect of subsidy removal, NERA unification, uh, FS unification has not yielded any positive results. And that is why I would advise the president to look at these policies because so far so good. I have not seen the benefit of the first subsidy removal and the FS unification because the federal government has not told us some of the gains or some of the best, some of the results, the positive effect of this policy. What the Nigerians people have been grappling with in the last one year and so few months of the assumption of office of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is just the negative effect of these policies. Now, now the, the question president... to the presidency, the question to the presidency, when we Nigeria we start enjoying the dividend of this policy. Now, that question has been answered by the president. He's been talking about baby steps of pains, and Nigerians continue to ask how long. But let me bring your attention to another major challenge, the epileptic nature of our power grid. The power grid has collapsed for the umpteen time this year, and for the last eight days, as reported by the Daily Trust newspaper, parts of the northern part of Nigeria have been in total blackout. This is taking a toll on those who do businesses with frozen houses and other persons whose businesses largely rely on power. The TCN has come out with a statement saying it's intensifying efforts to get that part of the country back on supply. Many have seen the rejigging of some ministers having to be axed out of office. Many are asking, should that have been the fate of the minister of power, Mr. Adebayo Adelabu? How do we fix Nigeria's power issue? Uh, sincerely speaking, Vito, just this morning, some people from the northern part of Nigeria reached out and in some of our reports, complaining bitterly that the president of uh, president, the government of President Bola Ahmed Chinumu has not been fair to the northerners. The Northwest, precisely, for the past going to nine days, has been without electricity due to some collapse in the national grid. But one thing that is worrying some is the fact that for over a week that there was a what a collapse in the grid. The Northwest of the of the country has not been connected back. And yet, it seems that government are doing nothing, or the government is doing nothing. And some of the people have already mobilized to call for protest in the Northwest. For me, whatever the challenge could be, because I know some months ago, the Minister of Petroleum did mention that there are some jeopardy Due to the ongoing onslaughts on the uh, on, on the insurgent group, the bandit group, and some of these people are responsible for the uh, the, the the shutting down of our national grid. That our national grid is suffering because of the activity of some of the people who are jeopardizing government efforts because of the ongoing onslaught by the security agents against insurgency in the north in the north 
So, but majority of the northern people will not understand this technicality. And that is why the government needs to be on top of its game to ensure that the people understand what is actually happening. The Ministry of Information needs to do more to ensure that the northerners understand that this is not a witch hunting by the federal government, or this is not a uh, neglect by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu or a, a, an orchestrated And whilst it looks as though your connection has caught out for a while there, it's uh, about the alarming reports this morning. Of the federal government is not. Now, whilst we continue to have that slight technical glitch in connecting with uh, Patriot Desmond Forobi, it's important to also draw your attention to some of the statistics in terms of the estimated losses that Nigeria suffers owing to a collapse of her power grid. We're told, according to a new source, oh, yeah, Business AM, the minister, that it is jeopardy by some of these bandit guys and some of the collapse in the national grid and some technical problems that they are having. Well, well, these technical issues have also been reported to cost Nigeria some amounts of economic losses. We're told that Nigeria's economic worst dipens as the power grid collapses and we put it in the margins of $29 billion annually with the estimated billion ISO worsening power shortage. Now, some customers in Ban A are reportedly experiencing a higher cost than publicized. Initially, we're told that uh, the cost of electricity for Ban A consumers now is 225 naira per kilowatt hour. There was a minimal downgrade to 206.85 naira, but it almost seems as though this estimated billing for houses that do not have meters and even those metered in band a kind of experience some estimated billings in what many would say are not getting the quality they pay for i care to make any comments on this economic calculations as to what the country is losing following its instable power sector it is a known fact anywhere in the world that Nigerian economy is suffering, the industrialization of Nigeria is suffering, SME in Nigeria are suffering, the people of Nigeria are suffering due to power challenge. Nigeria for our, for many years, for over 30 something years, have been on this same issue of electricity and power generation which has crippled and affected businesses. Do you know how many companies in the last 25 years have left Nigeria to Ghana and to some other African countries due to electricity, due to power challenge? And it seems the government is yet to find a permanent solution to our power challenge. Some few months ago, it looks like the Ministry of Power have gotten solution to the challenge. But what is shocking recently is that even with the incessant increment in power tariff, in electricity tariff, being paid by the Nigerian people, whether you categorize them as ban A, ban B, or Bank C or Bank D. What I can tell you is that Nigerians are paying more for electricity. And to some, uh, like, like some months ago, we did see improvements in the electricity. But right now, we have not seen consistency in this electricity. And a lot of people are asking what is happening in the Ministry of Power, what is happening to the power generation. Apart from what they told us about some people are jeopardizing government effort by deliberately uh, destroying and responsible for the collapse in our national grid. But what I don't understand is that the, the blueprint should have covered and also ensure that 
this set of people that are responsible for jeopardizing this grid are also taken care of. When you have money or when you charge Nigerians for something, you should ensure that you do your due diligence as a ministry and as a leader in a particular sector to ensure that you provide adequate solution to some of the challenges that the Nigerians. Nobody will understand what is happening. What Nigerians want to see from the ministry is that we are paying so much for this electricity. We should get this electricity. That is what Nigerians are interested in. Nigerians are not interested in so many rituals and so many grammar on television or giving us reasons why there is no electricity. And let me tell you the effect of this. The effect of this covering Nigeria economy in Sopamon, if there is no electricity, because electricity is the backbone of businesses in Nigeria. And considering the cost of getting fuel, getting alternative energy using petrol, gas, which is even more expensive. We are talking about inflation for Christ's sake. The only way that the Nigerian economy can be stable and improve is if the federal government puts its heads together to ensure that there is more steady electricity and that our economy can recover. But right now, with this inconsistency up and down in the, uh, in the electricity sector, in the power sector, I doubt if the economy will recover soon. Well, in keeping with other issues in the news, it is quite a trying time with different sectors facing their different challenges. Now, and away from the electricity sector, when we look at the education sector, President Bola Metinibu has also sent the education minister packing. But the challenge now is on what happened last year with four months withheld salaries, whilst Nasu and Sanu embarked on a solidarity strike with ASU. They are yet to be paid. Beginning today, there's supposed to be an indefinite nationwide strike which would further ground academic activities. At this point, how can this issue be best resolved to avert what happened last year when a majority of the academic session was lost out to industrial action? Uh, sincerely speaking, if there is one issue that beats my understanding, is the issue of reaction uh kind of governance by Nigerian government, reactionary kind of governance by Nigerian government. Nigerian governments are not proactive. This government have always been reactionary. And it baffles me. It beats my understanding. You see, the issue of ASU, SANU, is long overdue. If you have been following the news, most recently since 2009, where there was about nine months strike and later agreement between the federal government, Ministry of Education, and ASU and SANU, which led to what? The suspension of the industrial action by staff of the university, the teaching and non teaching staff. There was some agreements. And since that time, there was a total abandon by the federal government, which led to another industrial action by the, by the staffs in 2022. And that led to some agreements. Do you know that it is not about the four months salary? It is about the agreement contained in the resolution that led to the word, the suspension of this industrial action. You see, there is a big problem in Nigeria. Every problem you have seen in the country today can be attributed to poor funding to our education sector. Our education sector is underfunded. Federal government seems to have lost in its priorities or do not really understand what to prioritize. What Nigerian government needs to prioritize more is education. If 
The Bible says, teach a child the way it should go, so that when it grows, it will not depart from it. The truth of the matter is this. Education. Education is the back, back rock of every developing economy or nation. The reason why Nigeria economy is not developing is because of the manpower. A lot of Nigerians do not get the right education, the right value from our education sector. And that is why our education system kept or keep producing half baked graduates that cannot contribute to national development and growth. For me, the issue of ASU, the issue of SANU, the issue of the Ministry of Education is really needed what they call serious state of emergency. Beyond payment of salaries, beyond giving this uh, uh, staff, this staff, staff of our, educa our, our university, their immediate demands, we need to do a total overhauling of our education sector. Our education sector needs serious attention and it's so pathetic that we are talking about economic recovery, we are talking about growth, and we are not looking at education. Our, if our education sector is not well funded and well attended to, Nigeria will continue to suffer the issue of kidnapping, uh, lack of patriotism, uh, bad economy, and all that, because education is the key. If Nigerians are well educated, if Nigerians get the right education, Nigeria will not be suffering how well we are suffering today, Vito. And that is why, for me, the government needs to declare state of emergency in our education sector and see how we can resolve this issue. Now, now, now let's let's move on to another sector because it almost seems as though today the newspapers have dedicated their front pages to the different sectors and the need to resuscitate them. Earlier on the Daily Independent, we revisited it again because Nigeria's mainstay is undoubtedly the oil and gas sector. But the Daily Independent, in its editorial headline this morning, reads: "Oil gas sector experts list how FG can ramp up production, attract investments." least solutions to underwhelming agri sector performance now it almost feels like a history lesson when we tell new generations that at a time in nigeria our mainstay was our granite pyramids our rubber our cocoa plantation most of these value chains which were exportable but since the advent of oil in oloibiri in 1956 nigeria continues to remain a country with vast potentials largely untapped is this another day to talk about how much we can do with these resources without actually doing them? Who is responsible to get the agri value chain back on track and with the Renewed Hope mandate also prioritize this area in some of its key policies and reforms to get our economy back on track? What do you say, Patriot Desmond? Uh, Bito, uh, sincerely speaking, I think the Nigerian government and the leadership of this country are not ready to put this country on the path of growth and sustainability. The only sector that can sustain our economy and give sustainable economy to the country who, which have been suffering from bad economy is agriculture sector. Our agricultural sector needs attention and it has not gotten the desire or the need or the much talk about attention. There is so much more that has been said about diversification. 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 Without compelling attention by the government, either the federal government, the state government, or the local government. Bito, it, it, it is a known fact that the country has 
one of the best tropical, one of the best environment, and there is nothing we cannot grow in this part of the world. Nigeria is blessed. And our land can actually provide solutions to our food insecurity, scarcity, and unemployment. But this has been largely untapped or unattended to. It's so unfortunate that we have a youth population that we can convert this energy into farming, providing the right technology and infrastructure. Because government is always ready to take on easy way of making money. For me, petroleum is supposed to be a blessing. But the discovery of petroleum, like you rightly quoted, in 1956 in Oloibri, the present day Bayesa state, has become a cost to the country rather than being a blessing. The Nigerian government has sold crude for over 50 years. What has the country achieved from the sales of crude? Where is crude money? Where is our crude money? If you can calculate from the year that this country has been exporting crude, the money that has been accrued to crude from foreign land, if that money is well channeled to develop other sectors, our automobile sector will not be suffering today. Our air, air our flight, our, 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 our air, air, air system will not be suffering the way it's suffering today. Our transport system, our education system, our agricultural sector will not be suffering what is suffering today. The truth is this. We have young people that are willing to go into agriculture. But even the, 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 the country system of governance does not even give the federal government enough power to take advantage of the lands in the state and see how they can see to its development by ensuring that more young people go into farming. There are so many lands in the country today that is lacking and has become an harboring place for, for criminals. There are so many lands, so many spaces in the country that have become hidden places for criminals and criminal activities that naturally should have been for the development of young people in terms of agriculture and also food security and to, 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 to produce the food we need in this country. Look at the young people in the streets. What's stopping the federal government to launch an initiative that sees to the recruitment of millions of young people into farming? Vito, I am interested in farming. Likewise, you and so many other Nigerians. But the policies, the policies in acquiring land, the policies in investing in agriculture in Nigeria needs attention. And that's why I said the government is only talking about uh, uh, diversification, but they've not done the right policies. They've not paid the right attention to the agricultural sector. And that is why today the economy is suffering. God is waiting for Nigerians to focus or to go back to agriculture. The fair, the crude oil is not a blessing to us. In some ways, it's a blessing, but because of the kind of leaders we have in Nigeria, it has been a cost. So we need to look at agriculture. Agriculture can employ everybody. Agriculture can employ both the male, the female, gender. It can employ and engage the old and the young, the elite, the educated, and non-educated. Everybody in our society can be well captured by agriculture. President Bola Ahmed Tunubu did promise that he's going to employ 50 million people. What has he done in the agricultural sector? Where is the employment? What is the blueprint of the president in terms of diversification of young people who are willing to go into agriculture? Until there is a strong stance on this agro and agri sector, Nigeria is going nowhere.
Now, now, now let's also accommodate some comments coming in from the NLC. The Nigerian Labour Congress this morning made headlines on two newspapers where they vehemently condemned the recommendations by the IMF and the World Bank, blaming them, these Britain Wood institutions, for causing the economic hardship in the country. Now, the NLC is saying that uh, the IMF in particular is the reason why President Bola Metinibu decided to remove fuel subsidy. And the effects are not in the best interest of the Nigerian people, but in terms of what those Britain Wood institutions might gain from the country in some of the loans and more terms repayable to them. Do you agree? I agree 100% because it's about time that we start looking at local solutions to our problems. In the first instance, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, cannot be dictating to the Nigerian government what they should do with the Nigerian people. For so many years, we have seen from history the role that IMF and World Bank has played in on the development of the developing countries in Africa, East, Middle, Middle East, and in Asia. The IMF and the World Bank have not been sincere in sponsoring and providing leadership, direction, and loan to the industrialization of these third world countries, these developing countries, inclusive of Nigeria. The World Bank has not been beneficial to the developing countries. The, world, the IMF has not been to the development of Africa. They have always introduced policies that will lead to the exploitation of these developing countries and Nigeria. For me, personally, owing to the antecedents and history of the role that IMF has played, the World Bank has played, not just to Nigeria, but to all African countries, I have not seen any form of sincerity from them in trying to develop this country. But the kind of policies that they introduce and sell to these African countries is to see that these countries continuously depend on the euro, depend on the south. The policies that Nigerians are going through today, they always listen. To the IMF, always listening to the World Bank. And this World Bank do not mean well for Africa. World Bank, IMF, I can say this authoritatively, that they do not mean well for Africa. Besides, if you look at the body that regulates the activities and in control of the leadership of IMF and World Bank, where is the headquarter of IMF? Where is the headquarter of World Bank? Africa has been the major supplier of the raw materials for the industrialization of Europe. And yet, the countries that is responsible for the development of Europe is so underdeveloped and living in abject poverty. And yet, the IMF and the World Bank can be talking down on this same country. The kind of policy, the kind of politics that is going on with IMF and World Bank is that kind of politics that sees to the development of the leadership of the people who are in control of this IMF and World Bank. And if you ask me, who are these people? These are America, these are Europe, these are superpowers, these super countries, the, the Security Council, the made up of what? The America, the France, the China that is now recently included, the India, the, the this big parts, this superpower, Germany, France, you know, these countries, uh, Israel, Germany, all these countries, the Russia, these are the countries that exploit and they are in charge of the IMF, they are in charge of the World Bank, and they only give uh, rebate and uh, the support to African countries as if the African country is a poor continent. African continent is a richest continent, but have been underdeveloped by the World Bank and the IMF. 
So I am in 100 in support of the statement by the leadership of uh, the, 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 labor, the labor leaders. Because now, in a conference that is going on, they denied that they are not responsible for the policies of the president. But before now, IMF and World Bank have been advocating that our mayor should be what? Should be uni our efforts should be unified. They have been advocating that our subsidy should be removed. But just about two days ago, they denied that completely. And that is why you need to know that these people mean nowhere for the African continent, Nigeria inclusive. So Nigeria leaders need to go leave for what just happened two days ago by IMF by distancing itself from the ongoing policy. The President Bola Tunubu needs to listen to that statement by IMF. President Bola Tunubu and the CBN governor needs to listen to IMF that it's like a setup. And we should not allow ourselves to be fooled into this destruction. We should look at our own local problem and provide local solutions because the country is rich. Now, Why now, the country now, men are suffering is because of bad policies. And these policies are introduced or influenced by this IMF, World Bank, and this super powers. Now, now let's talk about some policies that have for some time been seen to better our lots. But in the last five months, it's been tipsy turvy I'll refer us back to the publication on the front page of The Vanguard, where the exchange rate between the NAR and the dollar is reportedly declining. At some point, a lot of Nigerians were applauding President Bola Metinibu's decision to float the NARA and remove the exchange rate cap with a controlled sales of dollars to BDCs. But this morning, the Vanguard in its headline story tells us pressure mounts on NARA falls to 1,740 NARA in parallel markets. Eight months gain wiped out. Parallel market dealers project further depreciation. Monetary fiscal authorities hold divergent views. CBN set to launch new forex trading system. Now, this gains of the Naira, many said we're cosmetics, that we need production to sustain it. But having seen this go up and down in eight months, do you think that the policy and the decision to float the Naira, thereby removing the exchange rate cap, was a good one? Well, let me tell you something, Vito. Until you deal with the fundamentals, until the government deals with the root cause of this problem. You see, all these policies, all these interventions by CBN, by the Minister of Finance, all these policies, fiscal policy and all that will not need any positive response until you deal with the main or the root causes of our problem. Now, if you ask me, Bito, what is the root cause of our problem? The root causes of our problems lies with one bad governance and leadership in Nigeria. Number two, corruption. Number three, inconsistency in our laws and not having a strong stand against bad actions of people in authority. First of all, whatever you introduce as an intervention in our fiscal policy, in our monitoring policy, in the CBN, our forest, we will not need any resource until we deal with the issue of what? Jeopardy by some people in position of authority. Number two, the issue of corruption. Corruption. I repeat it for the third time, corruption. Corruption is the major problem. Nigerians, some Nigerians are terrible people. They are very terrible. Terrible in the sense that when you introduce a good policy that is supposed to see to the turn around of activities in a particular sector, give Nigerians only two weeks, three weeks, or one month they would have looked and capitalized on the loophole of that policy. The policy that was introduced by CBA, first, to unify our Naira because some people, it's still corruption. It's corruption that is making Nigeria to, to do different kind of things. Corruption. Initially, federal government has been subsidizing our Naira to ensure that certain sectors get certain 
our, our, our subsidy from FS from the according uh, based on government price. But some people are not using it judiciously. They will get this money from the CBN and give it to Aboki black marketers. The black marketers will sell it at a very high rate against what they collect from the federal government, against the economy of the country, for their own selfish gain. That error I've seen to people sleeping at night as a millionaire and waking up in the morning as billionaires and trillionaires. It made some people so rich, richer than the government. So because of the corruption, they left that policy, introduced this new policy by registration of Burundi saying and unifying our foreign, our, our, unifying our, 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 our efforts. Still, these same terrible people have discovered a new way of what? Laundering this money and converting this money and then having different, you know, multi, 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 multiple registrations that they now use to still lose the system. So some of these policies, why they are good intention, they, they were introduced with good intention, but because of some terrible people that are in position of influence, it ends up not yielding the result. Now, if you ask yourself, Bito, what was the intention of CBN and the federal government for introducing this policy? Because they want to see that some people will stock dollars in their homes. They release this dollar back to the market. But today, after some months of the progress made from this policy, this policy for some months, now about several months, it has not been giving any positive results. And it looks like the CBN is even lost on what to do. See, I think we need to go back to drawing board. We need to go back to the basis and deal with the issue of corruption. Let's reverse all these things and deal with corruption. The federal government is not doing enough in their fight against corruption. And some of these interventions and some of these policies, they are not eating that result we are looking for because some people are still looking at the loopholes and there is no perfect policy. Every policy comes with its loophole. Some terrible people in position of, of authority in Nigeria, they always look at the loopholes in our laws, in our policies, and they use it for their own self-interest. So the issue of lack of patriotism to the cause of the national growth and development by majority of the people in, uh, in position of authority in the CBN, in the NMPC, in our ministries, in our agency, is the reason why majority of Nigerians are suffering and why the country is suffering. Now, let's look at two more issues in the news. We just have 10 minutes in which to squeeze that in, and we'll do five for each of the issues. The first of which is our debt servicing. In our culture, either from debts we incurred through the IMF or World Bank, Nigeria now has an overhang of 134.35 trillion naira, and each year we put out our budgets. 95% of those budgets go into debt servicing. This is projected to also impede economic growth. At this current rate, some experts say it would take Nigeria 25 years to double the economy. Is there a way out of this? How can Nigeria rescue its debt servicing and better support production with the intensification of our export sector as well? Uh, Bito, one of the best things that the government can do first of all is to ensure that they cut down their cost of running, running government. The cost of running government in Nigeria is too high. And there are some agencies that I see as duplication of work. Uh, can and you give us some examples of that? Some of those agencies you feel are duplication of functions? For example, when you have Ministry of uh, Tourism, before you know it, another ministry was created, Creative Economy. Another ministry was created, Heart. You know, which is supposed to be one ministry. Ministry of Youth was supposed to be in charge of youth and anything that has to do with development of youth, which is included of arts, entertainment, sports, and all that. We still have duplication because of policies, of policies. Now, 
I don't even know why Nigeria has a big camera legislature. I do not know why we are still running House of Reps and the Senate. Bito, if you ask me, what is the function of the Senate? What is the role of a Senate? Where we have constituency being represented from all the constituency from the 774 local government at the National Assembly. Now, what is the function of Senate? What has Senate done for this country since the inception of this house? And if you look at the huge budget that is budgeted or allocated for the running cost constituency wardrobe allowance, you know, and all that for these senators, is another way. It's not just the Senate, not just the National Assembly. In almost every sector of our again, with the what? With a very good microscopic hat at governance. How best, how best can we bring some innovations into running Nigerian government? For me, what we should build is institution that can autopilot itself, not to just be duplicating offices and yet we are not seeing the result. All the ministries in Nigeria should be charged to contribute to national growth and development. Most ministries of Nigeria, because they are not charged to be productive, they end up collecting salaries, collecting budget and allocation. And yet, it is just like you are just empowering people. Ministries is not to empower people. Ministries is to work, to see that there is a growth in that sector. Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Trade and Investment, Minister of Technology. What goods has these ministries delivered in contributing to our national growth and development? Now, now in that it's measurement of that matrix, the key performance indicators in which the president has used to rejig his cabinet thereby letting some ministers go. I'm very sure by the next time we sit down here to talk, we'll also be looking to assess the newly appointed ministers. But just before we close, our last newspaper, The Blueprint, looked at the reverse political impasse and the moves by the Victor Atta-led committee, side-by-side -side Pandef, to reconcile a predecessor and his successor. Do you think that uh, this would yield the much intended results Hence, we saw the fact that even President Bola Metinibu's peace pact signing has somewhat failed to keep the peace between the FCT minister and the governor of River State. Uh, sincerely speaking, I think the federal government has not done enough uh, to look at the ongoing conflict of interest between the uh, governor of River State, Tim Kubara, and his predecessor, Barista Yesom Wike of FCT. And with the current threat by some agitators in the South South, that they are going to shut down our oil our major source of revenue, they said they are going to blow pipelines, that they are going to resume activity if the federal government do not intervene. Beyond the intervention of one person, that is the president, I'm looking at institutional intervention that will see that this continuous or recurrent fight between predecessor and successor in government across the policy state of the country. We need to find a permanent or a law. The National Assembly should look at it critically and criminalize the act by some predecessor to over influence, if not for developmental issues, 
if not for recommendations, more states in Nigeria would have done well for the people, if not for the role that Godfather plays. Lagos State is also, at some point, is suffering, where the people cannot determine who is their president, their governor, who is their leader, but the we have a, a Godfather who and speak whoever he likes, whether it is the will of the people or against the people, and you know, install them, install that person to become the governor of the state. This has happened in different states. So there should be a law. There should be a law that will see to the influence or the overstretching influence of predecessors in different parts beyond the president. But the reverse issue needs urgent intervention of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu before we we'll go back to the era of jeopardy, bomb, bomb, uh, uh, blasting of our pipeline and crippling of our economy by this pandemic and these uh, members of the uh, Niger Delta Force. Well, we must thank you, Patriot Desmond Olariwaju, for sharing your very main thoughts and preferring some solutions in your opinion on the show this morning. We do appreciate you. Thank you so much, Vito, for having me this morning. Well, this is where we draw the curtains on our newspaper review segment. Be reminded that you can re-watch this episode on our YouTube channel as we give you an overview of the headline stories and items in the news with in-depth analysis. We'll take a break now, and when we return, the 9 o'clock segment will reflect on the state of the nation, particularly with the call of Nigerian workers in different states for the implementation of a new minimum wage and the disparity in what some state governors have taken the initiative on in adding some amounts above the 70,000 Naira as approved by the federal government. It promises to be an engaging conversation and would have in-guest studios to also share their thoughts on it. Stay with us. <laughs> 